Welcome to the Rayob program in the Sounding Diagram Options Format tab. All features shown are available to the Rayob Basic program unless otherwise indicated. There are two ways to access diagram options. One is to go to the menu bar, then select Options, and then the Diagram Options. To see the other method, we'll first close the Options panel and then just right-click anywhere over the Sounding Diagram like this. This video only discusses the Format tab. All diagram options have been turned off to better illustrate how the options work. At the top are the diagram types with three different diagram formats. This Rayout program initially opened with the SKU-T log P diagram with its slanted temperature lines. The next option, the emigram, is similar to the SKU-T, but the temperature lines become vertical as seen here. The third diagram option, the tephragram, is more like the SKU-T with its slanted temperature lines and the pressure lines, although basically horizontal, are slightly curved. It is because of these curved pressure lines that the special sub-option to display warning message about the offset graphic analyses exists, which is just a reminder of the nonlinear horizontal format of this diagram. All three diagrams can be used for plotting data in the tropospheric region, but for those soundings that extend above 100 millibars, the emigram is the best choice. The emigram diagram also has a sub-option, to display temperature grid lines, which can remove the temperature lines for various display purposes like this. But we'll just turn them on for now. Now we'll return to the original SKU-T diagram. Here we can see that it has its own sub-option to automatically display the emigram for high altitude soundings, which means that the emigram will automatically be displayed for any soundings extending above 100 millibars, assuming you have the optional high altitude module. Now let's move down to the Diagram Options section. We'll first look at those which do not require plotted data, such as the Height Scale option. The Height Scale is always plotted to the right side of the sounding diagram, with kilometer and feet scales. With no sounding plotted, this scale reflects the ISA, or International Standard Atmosphere Structure. However, when a sounding is plotted, the scale automatically adjusts to reflect the thermodynamic properties of that sounding. In other words, the height scale becomes thermodynamically coupled to the pressure data, thereby creating a unique height scale for each individual sounding. Next, we'll turn on the Always Draw 925, 850, 250, and 150 millibar pressure lines option. These four additional pressure lines can now be seen along the y-axis, but for now, we'll turn them off to reduce clutter. Before proceeding, we'll next need to plot a sounding. So we'll first close the Options panel and then go to the File menu and down to select the sounding from the recently accessed files. OK, now we can go back to the Sounding Diagram Options by right-clicking over the diagram. Now back to the Diagram Options section and we can turn on the Display Elevation Layer option. This gives you a good perspective on the sounding's relative height above sea level. Note that the height scale automatically adjusts to the elevation layer. Now we can also turn on the Draw Surface Line option. This option extends the surface boundary beyond the left side of the diagram, in addition to displaying three important surface parameters. If you ever forget what is being displayed, you can always hover the mouse over the items in question. And if the mouse cursor image includes a question mark, then you can right-click the mouse to display additional information. In this case, the three data items are surface elevation, altimeter setting, and density altitude values. Okay, let's again display the Diagram Options panel with a right click. Now we'll turn on the Stability Bars, where a new section is added to the display screen between the sounding diagram and the height scale. Here the sounding's environmental lapse rate is represented by four colored bars. By again moving the mouse over the Stability Bars, the question mark cursor appears and by right-clicking the mouse, more information is displayed, where red indicates an autoconvective lapse rate, yellow indicates an unstable or super adiabatic lapse rate, green indicates a conditionally unstable region, and blue indicates a stable region. We'll now recall the Diagram Options panel with a right-click and turn on the Wind Plot box. You'll now see the winds plotted along the right side of the sounding diagram. Just for comparison purposes, notice that the height scale is currently in the AGL or above ground level mode. But by using the heights options, we can change the scale mode to MSL or mean sea level. Notice that the height scale now extends downward while the plotted sounding and winds remain in place. Now we'll return the height mode back to the AGL option. 
The last of the diagram options, the analyses box, will be discussed last because it requires an HD or widescreen display. So now we'll drop down to the cursor data options. First, we'll turn on the parcel option, which displays the parcel data box. It is initially empty, but when you close the options panel, it becomes active as you move the mouse. You'll notice that the displayed values fluctuate between gray and black. That's because the data displays use a proximity mouse where the data values darken when close to one of the soundings data points, such as the 300 millibar point. The displayed values remain black and constant. But when I move away from the data point, the values change to a gray color and remain static with the last proximity values detected at 300 millibars. And as with any rule, there is always an exception. And in this case, no matter where the mouse moves along the sounding profile, there are two values which always remain active and are displayed in black. They are the LR and Tmax data. And just what do they mean? Well, just move the mouse up to the parcel data title box. And when the cursor icon again contains the question mark, then right-click the mouse to view an information panel. Here we can see a brief description of all data items, including the LR, or lapse rate, and the Tmax, or adiabatic surface temperature value, which is also the maximum surface temperature attained if that parcel is transported to the surface along the dry adiabat. Okay, let's open up the diagram options panel again, and now let's turn on the cursor data's diagram option. This displays the diagram data box, which is immediately below the parcel data box. It is also initially empty, but when you close the diagram options panel, the data box becomes active reflecting the diagram's grid values at the cursor location. And like the parcel data box above, if you move the mouse up to the diagram data title box, you will again see the mouse cursor icon with the question mark. Just right click and an information panel will display definitions of the box's data items. Before moving on to the next item, I want to demonstrate another feature of the diagram data box cursor function. Just hold down the shift key while moving the mouse and a small subset of the diagram data will be displayed in a small box as it moves along with the mouse. This lets you better focus on the diagram section of interest without having to look back to the main data box. Another feature of the shift key is its ability to save cursor images onto the diagram. For example, as you hold down the shift key and move the mouse to a location of interest, you can then left click the mouse to record an image of the mouse onto the sounding diagram. When this is done, you will be asked if you want to lock the values into the diagram data box. This time we'll say no. We can now continue to move the mouse and if desired, we can record another cursor image by again left clicking the mouse. This time we'll answer yes and lock the cursor's diagram values in the data box. And as you can see, the diagram data values remain static while the mouse continues to move around the diagram. You can easily remove these cursor images simply by going to the menu bar's refresh option to erase the images. Alright, let's get back to the diagram options panel with a right click. And now look at the lower right section, the UVW wind diagram options. The UVW refers to the soundings wind data. Normally, wind data just contain the two-dimensional UNV wind components, such as those winds plotted on this diagram. Some sounding data also contain the W wind or vertical component. But before loading one of those soundings, let's first try the bottom most selection, the UVW diagram only option. Now we are presented with Rayab's unique UVW sounding display screen. The wind plot box is now on the left side and the height scale is immediately to the right of the plotted winds. There is a new display box in the middle of the screen which contains separate plots of the U and V wind components. The far right section of the display screen can display various text data, which is discussed on the Sounding Diagram Options video series, the Analyses tab. So now we'll again call up the Options panel and select the Standard Diagram only. And now we're back to the original diagram display. Now let's close the Options panel and open the sounding file which contains UV and W wind components. This is the same sounding data, but with vertical wind components added. Notice how the vertical wind components are plotted using pale red and pale blue colors, where the center axis represents the zero or calm vertical wind value, and where the upward red winds are shaded to the right side and the downward blue winds are shaded to the left side. The vertical wind component scale is individually adjusted for each sounding. Here the plus 10 and minus 10 knots are indicated because the maximum absolute vertical wind speed is 10 knots. 
Now we'll recall the Options panel and select the UVW Diagram Only option. And here we can see the vertical wind component shading as before in the wind plot box, while the vertical wind component is also plotted in the adjacent UVW diagram with a magenta profile as shown in the legend. Also notice that the data range is plus and minus 101 knots because the maximum UV wind is 101 knots, which is located here. There is one last option for UVW diagrams, the automatic diagramming option. When selected, it always displays the standard diagram when temperature data are present and always displays the UVW diagram when only wind data are present. So let's apply automatic diagramming and we can see that it takes us back to the standard diagram because the sounding contains temperature data. So let's now use the file menu to call up a sounding which only contains wind data. And it automatically takes us to the UVW display. And just to show you that the sounding does not contain temperature data, we'll select the standard diagram only option. And now you can see the plotted wind data, but no sounding temperature profile. Okay, before discussing the last option for this format tab video, we'll need to load up a sounding that contains temperature and wind data. Now we'll recall the options panel and turn on the analysis box option, but just using the narrow mode for now. Upon applying this change, we now see the analysis box between the stability bars and the height scale. In order to demonstrate the analysis box, we'll first go to the menu bars analyze option, which displays the analyze toolbar. Please note that many of the toolbar buttons only function when using the optional analytic module. Only the six buttons at the bottom of the toolbar affect the analysis box. And since this sounding does not contain ozone data, that button is not functional. Each of the toolbar buttons toggle on and off the button parameter. For example, when selecting the wind speed button, a red line is drawn in the analysis box depicting the relative wind speed where the minimum value is at that left boundary and the maximum value is at the right boundary of the box. When you again click the wind speed button, the line graph is removed. Now we'll recall the options panel and demonstrate the last diagram option, the analysis box wide mode, which is now commonly known as HD or high definition for widescreen displays. Note also the parenthetical sounding gram word. This means that the analysis box wide mode functions in a similar manner as does the optional sounding gram module, which is discussed in a separate video. Before we can demonstrate the analysis box wide mode, we first need to reconfigure this video into a widescreen monitor view. And there's our widescreen view with a greatly expanded analysis box. And now when we recall the toolbar, we see a second column of toolbar buttons, where the right side buttons only apply to the expanded analysis box, or soundigram section. And just like the narrow mode analyses, these parameters are toggled on and off. For example, by clicking on the theta button, you can toggle the, the potential temperature and other parameters. And unlike the narrow mode box, the soundigram profiles come with individual scaling grids and labeling. That completes the sounding diagrams format tab video. Thank you for watching.